Good day, everybody. Meteorologist Mark Molnar here. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. We're going to take a look and see if there's any more chances of wintry weather. And in that, for that matter, we're going to take a look at lots and lots of springtime weather as well. Let's take a look at all of those factors affecting a very warm going into the weekend and next week. We got some rainstorms to talk about, some severe weather to talk about, and see if there's any snow on the horizon left or any chances for that matter. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Question or comment down below. I love to read your questions or comments. And there are timestamps down below if you wish to skip ahead. Smash the like button and share this video. Let's get into it. All right, taking a look at the trouble spot. You know, I always start off with one of these trouble spot maps. We're breaking out the severe weather outlook maps. Yep, here in mid-March. We're starting off early. Now, Friday through Saturday, this is the severe outlook. This is basically Friday, this part of the map. So you have this enhanced risk across southern Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Panhandle of Florida. Um, this is where we're going to see a big risk of tornadoes here. And I'm going to break it down for you in the probabilistic maps here. And then this part here, this East Coast component, comes Saturday. So you'll have that tornado threat here across the Outer Banks, Eastern North Carolina, Eastern South Carolina. And we'll have the risk even getting up here into parts of New York. Now, I don't think we'll see a widespread severe outbreak up in this area but you know later friday night into saturday we might see a gusty thunderstorm in places like binghamton erie wilkes bear scranton harrisburg uh, philadelphia down towards the tidewater here as well so you're going to want to watch out for this let's break it down for you all right here it is the threat of severe weather that's going to be the big story friday into saturday here if we take a look at the southeast there's that slight risk from all the way down from the gulf coast new orleans over to panama city there's that enhanced risk in the orange here uh, along the Florida Panhandle and southern Alabama and extreme southeastern Mississippi. That's where we get into that enhance. That's where things are really going to get tough with tornadoes here. And then look at that slight risk extending north just west of Atlanta all the way up to Nashville, Birmingham, Alabama, and then here right into the Ohio River Valley, western Kentucky, extreme southern Indiana, and Illinois. So this is going to be the problem, tornado threat. This is a problem with 5% chance of tornado all the way up to the Ohio River Valley here. And then you get this 5, 10 to 15, right around a 10% chance here in the Florida Panhandle, uh, right around just west of Panama City here into parts of southern Alabama, southeastern Mississippi. This is where the big problem spot is for tornadoes. And we're going to go over those mesoscale models here momentarily. We get into the hail all the way up into the Ohio Valley to the Gulf Coast here damaging hail a possibility and there's that wind damage now as we head into saturday that's where things are going to continue to the east as that front pushes to the east here and there it is slight risk from delaware all the way down to florida panhandle here let's get into particulars all right now i wanted to show you something heading out into the storm prediction centers you know you have this day four through day eight here now they usually don't post anything because the like day four here this is sunday predictability too low potential predictability but watch this i show you friday or uh, monday here this is day five look at this this is i mean if we're seeing this kind of uh outlook here on day five by the spc look at this northeastern texas this could be a really big bad day for you it, you're you're up in the 30 percent range here so th this is like really yeah this is really bad so the conditions are going to be coming together here for quite an outbreak here so this is something we really need to watch really carefully now if we get to day six here look at this so we still have 15 percent here this is tuesday of next week so i mean seriously this is crazy here we're gonna see the potential for a widespread severe weather outbreak, we're seeing it this far out on the maps. And day seven, here we go. So it, it, it continues a little bit farther to the east here, across Panhandle, Florida, South Georgia, and Alabama. That's next Wednesday. And then we finally get next Thursday. It kicks out to the east. All right, let's take a look at the NAM 3 kilometer here. We put this into motion. This is that big old low in the middle of the country here. This is right around... Midnight, Thursday night to Friday morning, you can see, yeah, there's some thunderstorm complexes going here on the east side of this low into Louisiana, into Mississippi, and eventually Alabama right after sunrise here. So you're going to be making up to big time thunderstorms here and supercells on the southern end of this. 
A little bit of snow on the northwest side of the system. And as you can see, that thunderstorm complex moves to the east here in the southeast. And we'll be dealing with this throughout the afternoon here as individual cells continue to get their act together into Friday night. You can see the first round of rain moving into the northeast. We'll have to watch some cell development here east of the Appalachians. And then Saturday, that switches to the east coast here. So now... I wanted to show you the southeast here. So we'll put this into motion for your Friday. This is basically simulated radar at this point. So yeah, before sunrise, about six hours before sunrise, the big storms, the cells will be over Louisiana. And then we put this into motion right around sunrise here. We're going to get those cells moving across Mississippi into Alabama. And this is where things could really start to get active here. So we take a look at this. Take a look at those strong storms. We got some isolated supercells developing behind this main batch of systems. So you'll get some damaging winds. Uh, here in Atlanta, it looks right around noon to hit you. It, you have a marginal risk at this point, but it could get pretty strong here. Even Atlanta southward here into the Panhandle of Florida. Now this area here, this is where the supercells are going to get going. And sometimes the models have a hard time picking up on all these supercells. So this is the this is the problem into the afternoon hours. We're going to watch for these supercells that could develop those rotating thunderstorms with damaging winds and tornadoes. So we're going to watch for that. You see these linear fashion. They do try to line up in lines here, but they are individual cells. And that is that is the problem that we're going to have here across the southeast. Um, so if we take a look at the mid-Atlantic, severe weather-wise, so your day is going to be mainly Saturday. So let's put this into motion into your Saturday. T take a look. There's that first batch that enters the northeast of rain into Saturday morning. So you'll clear it out, and then you get another batch. See, this? there's even cellular-type storms up here. They're more elevated, though, so you're not going to get damaging wind, large hail, and tornadoes. But here across the East Coast, you see some of these complexes. Here's the first one. This is right around noon in North Carolina. Could contain some damaging wind. And then you get these linear fashion, but they're individual cells lining up here. And so, some of these stronger cells here could produce, even into southeastern Pennsylvania here, I think is a pretty good chance into the afternoon, early evening. There it is. See these cells lining up. Even up to Binghamton, you could see a gusty thunderstorm. Probably not severe at this point, but still gusty. And damaging wind, large hail, a threat here. This is uh, heading towards sunset. So look at that, even in New Jersey. So watch out for some strong uh, thunderstorms as far north as New Jersey, southeastern Pennsylvania here. That is a pretty good threat. All right, let's take a look at the CAPE, a convective available potential energy. This is like another form of energy and food for thunderstorms. Let's get into it here. Let's take a look. Uh, let's take a look at the forecast loop here, the NAM 3 kilometer. We're getting into earlier Friday here. So this brings us to uh, sunrise Friday. Take a look at some of this CAPE getting into the southern part of Mississippi and Alabama. So look at this 2000 CAPE here. Um, so New Orleans, you're right around 1500. So this is prime atmosphere here. We put this into motion throughout the day. Look at this. We're getting into two excess of 2000 here across Alabama, the Panhandle of Florida. This is getting past noon here. So you got this level of Cape. You're going to get some big time thunderstorms, especially if you get a trigger developing here. And look at this. We still are dealing with above 1500 Cape here. This is heading towards beyond sunset Friday night. And we're still dealing with a good amount of Cape here. So we're going to continue developing these supercell type thunderstorms. And as this progresses to the east, take a look at this, getting into North Carolina there. Let's get into that, by the way. Let's go over to the mid-Atlantic region here. And we'll fast forward this. Take a look. There we go. We're getting into Friday night here, early, early Saturday morning. Look at this. We're getting... About 1,200 Cape here in Raleigh. So this is going to bring you some big-time thunderstorms here moving up through North Carolina. And watch this blossom throughout the day. This is noon on Saturday. Take a look at that. 2,000 Cape just east of Raleigh. Uh, Virginia Beach right around 1,500 Cape. And we're actually getting 1,200 Cape all the way up into south-central Pennsylvania here. So it, we could see development of thunderstorms. And as you can see, this continues to progress to the east here. We have uh, 2,000 Cape down here in eastern South Carolina, anywhere from 1,600, 1,700 here in eastern North Carolina, and all the way up here east of Harrisburg, right around Philadelphia. Look at that. pushes through. Uh, but you can see up here in New Jersey, we don't quite get it. And there's the, we get that marine layer, that northeast wind here, uh, keeping things pretty stable up here in the Long Island area. 
uh, New York City area, and then we start to see this really fall apart and move off the coast uh, by Saturday night. Now, if we take a look at the uh, the Energy Helicity Index, this is a really good index uh, indicating possibility of tornadoes. Um, so if we take a look, we're going to start off here with the Mid-Atlantic. I'll show you briefly. Um, as we head towards Saturday, this is just before noon, there is a threat that tornadoes, the tornado threat could be pretty great here. You get values approaching 3 here, 2.8, 3.1. When you get into those kind of values here in the orange, that's where the problem lies. Any of these thunderstorms could rotate and become tornadic in nature here and that heads towards the Virginia Beach area up just south of Washington DC here so you're going to want to watch this area southeastern Virginia eastern um, North Carolina and then down towards central South Carolina here as well as we head throughout the day there's noon hour and as you can see there's a layer of marine stable air here along the coastline and just inland Delaware Maryland that's where the tornado threat is going to diminish greatly and you see we really don't get up to it here in New Jersey it's continuing in eastern North Carolina and east southeastern Virginia here and that diminishes very greatly as we head into Saturday night now if we head into the southeast here take a look at this here it is the energy helicity index or the EHI so we put this into motion this is where we're really concerned Yes, there is a tornado threat across southeastern Louisiana, but it's occurring uh, during the time where the day daylight, the daytime heating is not as great. So if we put this into motion, here is noon hour. So it's correlating with the greatest valley of Cape, if you've noticed, there in southern part of Alabama and Mississippi in the panhandle of Florida here. This is area where any one of these supercells that gets cranking could seriously rotate, and we could be looking at some really, really bad damaging threat of thunderstorms here. Now, as we head towards uh, Friday night into Saturday morning here, that threat thankfully diminishes, but we still are holding on to some threat here into central and southwestern Georgia in the panhandle Florida. So a lot of these could end up being nocturnal thunderstorms, and sometimes those are the most dangerous type of thunderstorms and then we have a secondary area cranking around eastern South Carolina here as we head into early Saturday morning and there's that threat continuing up into eastern North Carolina for your Saturday there we go the rapid refresh model here let's take a look at some of the indications here heading into here we go later Friday there's that thunderstorm complex across the southeast and that really starts to get into New Orleans uh, this is as just your sun is rising, so you're getting into daylight here. This is where things really get cranking in the lines, and then you get these cellular type supercell scenarios here as we head towards the noon hour. We have that complex shift through Atlanta, Georgia here, and then approach. Here we go, just west of Panama City here. Take a look at that. Strong thunderstorms continuing across the area, and then we become cellular, supercellular here in nature here across the mid-afternoon hours so this is where supercells will start to break out here and we could have damaging wind large hail isolated tornadoes here as well so if we head up to well this actually let's see this does go into saturday so let's get into parts of the mid-atlantic here we'll take a look here we go so that first complex here across the southeast friday and then we head into saturday so here we go, early Saturday morning, rapid refresh model. We're not seeing too much uh, during the morning hours, but there we go. We start to see at the last frame here, some of these storms can starting to fire, especially across central and southeastern Pennsylvania here, where we could get some daytime heating, and some of these could become strong or severe, and then start to re redevelop here into parts of the Virginias here. And if we take a look at some of the severe weather uh, parameters here, um, take a look at the cape for your saturday here it's not as potent as the nam but there it is you have some cape values a thousand to fifteen hundred and then you get into eastern south carolina where you get into the 2500 range there let's quickly take a look at national snow here yeah eastern colorado that's where in parts of western kansas here but as we put this into motion over the next week or so, you really don't see most of it's in bottled up here in eastern Canada. We get a little bit southeast of the Great Lakes and some of the higher elevations. A little mountain snow out west here in the Cascades, northern Rockies, central Rockies, but 
Nothing really here to report back east. So let's take a look at the height anomalies. It's going to give us a good idea of where the ridges and troughs and the stormy weather and the quiet weather is going to be. So look at that across the east. There's that ridge hanging tough into the weekend. We get a little bit of troughiness here into the Ohio Valley on the backside of this low pressure system. And then trough developing on the west coast here. Look at the troughiness here in the Gulf of Alaska. This might really start to bring us ridging back east here so take a look at that there's that ridge blossoming across the midwest and the southeast we get a trough digging here across parts of the southern rockies and look at this big ridge developing on the west coast in response to this trough here into the gulf of alaska so we get this big ridge and then we got a troughiness here into the northeast part of the country now if we put this into motion look at that big ridge here developing along the east this is towards the middle of next week wednesday march 23rd big trough here in the midsection of the country and a major ridge out west so let's see what this does wow next weekend friday into saturday is looking a lot different here we're looking at two big troughs here across here we got the Gulf of Alaska and then here on the East Coast. And these usually correlate with each other. And there's that ridge developing out west here. So this is what you normally would see when you see this type of scenario. And look at that. Yeah, it's time for springtime. It's time to get blocking up here so you can get some colder than average temperatures here across the Northeast. I know you just love that, don't you? But that's the harsh reality here. And it does show signs it might try to kick out. But with this up here... And this trough out here, Ridge, Greenland Block, Trough, Gulf of Alaska, it doesn't give me much hope going in to this part of the month where we could see some colder than average temperatures. So if you, know, you want to break it down, look into the medium range climate model. Let's kind of put that into motion here. So we can go beyond that. There's that trough, but look at that. Wow. Yeah, we get some ridginess here in northeastern North America here on the mid-medium range climate model. And the medium range climate model is kind of hinting at a lot of back to for back and forth here. So, But then look at this, early April, April 9th. Look at this. This, this is a little bit troubling here. Is this Mother Nature trying to throw some curveballs at us? It's like there's going to be a big battle here. You can see it because if I go back here, Look at that. So, yeah. I mean, don't look at any one day as a point, but look at that. Look at that pinwheeling of what's left of the polar vortex going on here. So we're going to have some storminess. You, you know it. So I'll keep you tuned. I'll keep you updated here. All right, Derek Rentschler from Lebanon County, Pennsylvania. A time lapse of snowfall from March 12th to March 14th. 2022 here had about five inches of snow in the Lebanon County, Pennsylvania area. Take a look at that heavy snow that was occurring across his area. Even some wind kicking in there. And if we kind of, it's a two minute video here. So if we kind of speed it up just a little bit, you can see, yeah, there's quite a bit of snow there piling up. You can see how it, and then you got some breaks of sunshine there too. Look at that. Nice capture there, Derek, from the Lebanon County, Pennsylvania area. All right, taking a look at the northeast here for your Friday. Look at this. Wow, we have a cold front slicing in from the west, so temperatures are cooling down to the 50s. But look at this. Ahead of the front, 72 in Pittsburgh, 71 in Binghamton, 70 in State College, 71 it was well here in Scranton and Wilkes-Barre area, 73 in Harrisburg, and 76 in D.C., 73, nice day to get out in New York City, and 72 in Boston. North of it, you're in the 50s and the 60s. Rain showers coming in from the west. This is going to spoil your weekend. It will be rather warm, though. Look at that, mid-60s here across upstate New York. Pennsylvania, we get to the 72 in Harrisburg. We do have that severe threat. I think this will come later in the day as we get some daytime heating, some breaks in the clouds. This, a lot of this will be earlier in the day, early morning, to mid-morning, early afternoon, and then we'll kick this off to the northeast, and we'll get some isolated cells here developing. Maybe a gusty thunderstorm as far north as Binghamton, but look at this. We get into damaging wind-large hail across parts of southeastern Pennsylvania, uh, southern New Jersey, and then heading into eastern uh, Maryland and Virginia and Delaware as well. And then we kick this into Sunday. We push this low to the northeast, and we bring those temperatures back down right around 50 in most areas chance of scattered showers throughout the day maybe some snowflakes in the higher elevations there in the adirondacks and then monday we kick another cold front to the south so you see the trend is colder here 
Uh, we do have temperatures warming back up ahead of this cold front, though. 56 in Binghamton, 50 in Albany, and 65 here in Harrisburg, 62 in Pittsburgh. But you watch these temperatures tumble after this forecast period. All right, so taking a look at the southeast for your Friday, we're starting off with a severe weather day here. As I discussed with you, uh, temperatures will be into the 70s, most areas 80s, and look at that, 90 in Tampa. So the big area here is from New Orleans over to Panama City, uh, right around Birmingham, maybe Atlanta as well. We're right on the edge here. Nashville, you're getting in on severe weather, damaging wind, large hail, but the tornado threat here is in the orange. So you're going to want to stay tuned. This is going to be a big storm as it tracks to the east. So if we get into your Saturday here, the cold front slicing to the east, we still can't get rid of that severe weather. There it is from pretty much Delmarva all the way down to the Panhandle of Florida, again, northern Florida. Um, and then we have Charleston up to Raleigh and Norfolk. You're getting a damaging wind, large hail, and the possibility of some tornadoes here as well, especially in eastern North Carolina here. Now, if we kick this out, look at this. Temperatures falling behind it pretty quick here. High pressure building in across the southeast. We only have a chance of a shower. Thunderstorm 86 in Miami, 67 in Atlanta, 61 in Roanoke, and 63 here in Norfolk. And then we head into Monday. Here's the beginnings of big trouble. High pressure sliding to the east. We get return flow. Warm front spells trouble. Damaging wind, large hail, tornado threat, especially here across northeast Texas. So watch out. Uh, I will have updates on that as we get closer. Five-day outlook. Binghamton to Scranton's upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York into northeast Pennsylvania and all points along the upper Susquehanna River Basin Friday through Tuesday here. Yes, we got the nice day Friday. That's a springtime day, 71, low of 37. So this takes us into the weekend. We have that chance of thunderstorms. It's going to be mostly rain in the morning and early afternoon hours. And then as we get some convection towards the cold front after the warm front moves through, we could get some thunder boomers moving into the area. Now, I don't expect any of them to become severe. Some of them might contain strong wind gusts to 40, 45 miles per hour, frequent lightning Maybe some small pea size hail or less, but we're not looking at a severe weather outbreak here in this region. So it will be a nice spring day again. Mostly rain, though, so if you have those outdoor plans. Into Sunday, the cold front moves through uh, throughout the night, Saturday night, 50. And then Monday, we got sunny skies, 56, and Tuesday, 52, with partly cloudy skies. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell button, smash the like button, share the video, and guess what? Social media, if you want my little updates in between videos, you can visit me Facebook at Mark. also Weather Northeastern. Also, my page coming up, Hurricane Northeastern for hurricane season. And guess what? Mediamark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com, Twitter at WeatherEastern.